Greetings, the Astro 30 here yet again and welcome back to AEL. Now if you're new to this channel please consider going down below and subscribing if you haven't done so already. That'll be great, helps me out immensely, cheers. Today we're going to be looking at uh, the guitar practice amplifier which I've now made a revision to the first PCB and changed it to an LM386 output amplifier. So. Um, I'll link the original video in the description. The front end of this PCB hasn't changed. It's the same as the other PCB. So here's one of the PCBs, up to their usual standard. Um, and I've designed this to be optional to have a, a gain of 200 or a gain of 20 on the LM386, depending on which way you want to go there. The front end's the same, so I, I'm not going to explain too much about a schematic. It's just the original schematic with the LM386 amplifier tacked on the end and the um, Class AB transistor amplifier removed. Now I could have made the board's width, or height in this case, lower, but I decided not to. So it's not much has changed um, except the output amplifier. So I'm going to steal all the components off of the other PCB like the input socket, the potentiometers, the capacitors and stuff. I have to go out and get some extra capacitors here that I don't have. Um, I don't know why I'm getting a 100 microfarad. Probably, anyway. Um, and then just build it up and we'll test it. So I'm also going to steal the headers off the old, old board as well. So yeah, that's going to be an interesting um, project, so hopefully this will work out better than the other one did. I did actually test on breadboard the LM386 amplifier connected to the other PCB's front end, and it, it works fine. It doesn't howl or squeal or carry on or anything, so that's good. Um, layout with the LM386 is very important and critical. Um, you can't just have routes going everywhere. I've made sure that my ground route, which is up here, I believe, no, that's the power. My ground route, which should be on the other side here, returns back to the filter cap center, rather than coming off of the uh, preamps ground at the soft clip point. Uh, because, yeah, it, it, I just want to make sure that current path goes back to the DC rather than going off of here if you know what I mean so yeah well let's uh, build this up and test it and see how we go let's get cracking penis all right uh, before I start construction I thought it would be a good idea just to have a quick look at the schematic now I'm not going to explain the front end section here because I already did that in the previous video on the original PCB. That is linked in the description if you haven't seen it already. We're going to look at the output side now. Uh, we've got a one microfarad capacitor coming from the center point of the volume control. Now on the data sheet it shows when you connect a volume control to the LM386 pin 3 here. You don't actually need that capacitor. But I've just included it because it's just a common thing to do. Um, it just stops any DC that might be present on pin 3 running back through the pot, destroying the pot over time. We have a 220 microfarad 16 volt cap up here, which is mounted really close to the LM386. And they say that in the data sheet as well. It just helps keep the IC stable. Um, We've got this optional 10 microfarad capacitor here between pin 1 and 8. That sets the gain to 200. We've also got this optional uh, 10 microfarad capacitor from pin 7 to ground. Now, they say in the data sheet that this capacitor, they don't actually mention its value, or they may do in the text, but I haven't read it um, fully. I only looked at the important information that I was interested in. Uh, but on other forums and sites that I've seen that use the LM386, it's often marked as a 100 microfarad capacitor. This is just on the bypass pin, and it says in the data sheet that you should use this pin if you have the higher gain setting on the LM386. You could put a resistor here as well in series with the capacitor to, say, get a gain of 50 or 30 or whatever you want. But I haven't included that option. It's either a gain of 20 or a gain of 200. 
So this capacitor on the bypass pin, I'm assuming just basically keeps the IC stable as best as possible when running at high gain. That then goes out through this Sobel network, 10 ohm and 100 nanofarad respectively, as per the data sheet, out this 220 microfarad capacitor to the speaker terminal connector. And that's pretty much it uh, for this. There's uh, not much more to, to talk about. It's just a common LM386. So anyway, let's get building and testing. Peace. Okay, the little circuit is built. Um, I didn't take any footage of it because I didn't really see the point um, as it's already been done in a previous video with the orig original board that didn't work out so well. Speaking of which, I've harvested off all the parts, pots, the input socket, capacitors, and I just uh, put new IC sockets, PCB pin, and uh, resistors and diodes and stuff on there. I wasn't thinking about bothering to take the resistors off the board. Um, and also the headers were harvested off the other board as well. There is another header to go here in the LED1 position, but for now I'm not going to include that. So I'm ready for testing this now, and I'm going to do a similar test as I did in the first one, is I'm going to tap off of the test point one to check that the front end is working first, and then I'll hook to the output of the LM386, which is over here now, um, and see if we've got an output, and I'll leave it unloaded for uh, uh, the first test, just to see if we're getting you know, a signal out, then I'll load it, and then I'll put it into a speaker, hook up a signal source, and uh, see how it performs. Right, let's get going. All right, the circuit's hooked up to the function generator at 440 hertz, uh, this little stuff's connected to the test point and to the ground strap on the pots here. Um, drive is set to minimum, tone is set to maximum, and this is kind of irrelevant for the master control for this test anyway, but it's set to uh, about a third. And as we can see, the front end is functioning. We've got an output signal. So I will increase the drive pot, and as we can see, it starts to clip. Excellent, now if we play with the tone pot, we can see it is making a difference. Okay, sweet, so I'll turn the drive back down to nothing. So I need to connect up the speaker leads, and I had to reverse the connections on the connector around because the ground's on the other side of the connector and that it was on the previous one, but that's neither here nor there, so I'll carefully move my scope probe to the white wire and as we can see we've got a slightly higher output and I haven't touched the master control so that's good the LM386 is outputting that drive um, I didn't include the two tank microfarad capacitors on the main circuit board because I'm not sure if I want the extra gain or the bypass yet and as we play with the master control, we can see that the amplitude is changing. So, it is actually working. Right, now that's unloaded, so I should load it into an uh, 4 ohm load. Because that's what the speaker is going to be driving later. Um, so, let me get that set up. Alright, circuit is loaded into a 4 ohm load. And as we can see, it's outputting fine. And, um, it's starting to clip there, so... I'm going to say that's probably its maximum output of 4 ohms. Um, oh, yeah, it's rounding off at the top a little. Back that off a bit. There we go. Maybe a little bit more. About there. So, we're getting 1.3 volt RMS out, which is okay. Which is a little less than half a watt. But, yeah, that's fine. I mean, what do you expect from the little NM386 amplifier? Now it's time to hook this up to the speaker, and, or a speaker, and my bass guitar, because I don't have an electric guitar on hand to test this properly with, but, yeah, it's the same theory. And we see, we'll see how it sounds, and whether I need to increase the gain or not. Alright, speaker is hooked up. 
power supply is currently not supplying any power to the circuit. I just want to make sure everything's good and not shorting. Excellent. Bit of a pop. Now I can put that at full and we'll get some reasonable output. It's not oscillating, which is a good thing. Okay, give it some drive. It does, does work. I mean, you're not going to get like full, you know, martial sound quality out of it. That's with not much volume, but in all honesty, I think that having the gain set to 20 as it is now is fine for most practical purposes. As I say, those two capacitors were optional, so they weren't actually necessarily needed to be installed. So, you can if you like. I will release this PCB on PCBWay if you wish to build it and experiment with it or whatever. It's only a $5 American PC, so whatever. But it works, I'm happy. That solved my other problem. I never did get that other one working. I have no idea what the fuck is wrong with it, but it just does not work. Um, no matter what I do to the to the power output stage, it's just refusing to do what I want it to do. Um, I've replaced a couple of transistors. I've uh, messed with a couple of resistor values, and yeah, I don't know. It's just it's just strange. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video. Please remember to go down below, like, comment and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And yes, this was a short one, but this is all this video's purpose was. So, anyway, this is the Astro 30 signing out saying, have a great day. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching.